Hey, this is question number six from the Ten Ready or TCAP practice test for Integrated Math 2. You'll see that down here. And uh, question number six is also in subpart one, which means no calculator allowed. So in this question, it's a pretty big factorization. But if we break it into a couple components, I think it could work. First off, I have a value of x to the sixth that if I take the square root of, so that would be 8 to the 6th 1 half power, because that's the same thing. 6 times 1 half gives you 3, so x to the 3rd, which means that x to the 6th is a square. So is y to the 6th, and I have a minus. Oh, that's a good thing. So the first step that I can make, and by the way, the easy thing to jump on is this one, but that does not work. So I can do a difference of squares. Difference of lie to yourself and pretend this is a square squares. Now to do difference of squares you want to have signs being different. Remember they cancel each thing out so I get x to the third plus y to the third and x to the third minus y to the third. That's our first step. Because if you do x to the third times x to the third, you get x to the sixth. And if you do this times this, it'll be canceled out. The middle terms end up canceling out because you'll do, sorry, if you do x to the third times negative y to the third, you'll get negative x to the third y to the third plus, because when I do it under here, same thing. So having those opposite signs actually cancel that middle term out. So I just end up with x to the 6 and y to the 6. So that's the first step. Now I'm going to look at these two parts separately. So now I have an added bonus feature here for this problem. This is a cube and this is a cube. So I could do sum of cubes. Not a few cubes like SOME, but the sum of when you're adding them together. And on this side, I deal with the difference of cubes. Now the difference of cubes and the sum of cubes are very similar. The only part that's difficult to remember is where to put the negative. So when I have sum of cubes, what you'll end up with in both cases is this, and then you'll end up with a squared, and then a b, and then b squared. If you wanted to check this, feel free to go back around and find it. The other one is also a b. So if you can just remember this setup, you'll be halfway there. There is a nice similarity between these two and the fact that it has a plus here and a plus here. The only difference between this and this, and these are generic difference of cubes by the way, uh, the only difference between this and this is that one of them, if it has the sum, then you put the addition here and this one becomes minus. And if it's difference, you put the minus here and put the plus right there. So I have this becoming this and this becoming this and I'll turn it into a non-generic form now. So x minus y x squared plus xy plus y squared and on the flip side over here x plus y x squared minus xy plus y squared. So there you go. It looks super messy, but if I can find this match, so I'm looking for x plus y and x minus y. Well, here's an x plus y and x minus y. And do I get that last part that I need in there? And if I do, I'm kind of good to go. You'll notice that this is not the same as this. So there's no 2 here. There's no reason for there to be a 2. So the answer to number 6, x minus y, check, x plus y, check, x squared plus xy plus y squared, 
chick x squared minus xy plus y squared. So before you take your test, if you just kind of get a feel for, okay, this is what a sum of cubes looks like, this is what a difference of cubes look like, you'll be in good stead. And the real way to do it is just remember, it's just a smaller term with the two numbers in it. By the way, it only applies when they're cubes and it's either plus or minus. You take the first variable and the second variable, and then you square the first variable, put the multiply the two variables together, square the second one. The squared second one is always a plus, and the only real difference is if it's sum of cubes, you put plus here, minus here. If it's difference of cubes, you put minus here, plus here. So the answer to number six is C. What else could you do to get this one? Here's the deal. You could multiply out all of the answer choices and get to your answer. The problem with that is it's very time sensitive. So this might be the type of problem that you'll want to kind of move past and then come back, like mark it to, to come back to it and then decide whether you have time or not. If you have the difference of cubes and sum of cubes in your memory so you can use them, not your short-term memory, your long-term memory, uh, then you'll have that as a nice tool. And the difference of squares you should have all the time at this point in uh, Math 2. But if you don't, just work on it a little bit and it should get you to where you need to be. And uh, if you have all three things in play, you're good to go in this problem. If not, you can always try multiplying out the answer choices. It'll take an extremely long time to do it, so save it till the end of the test.